Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India One of the things that uh, an aircraft designer always have to keep in mind is about uh, how uh, an aircraft is going to behave in motion with respect to external disturbances and the disturbances can be small or large. When we talk about uh, uh, disturbances and the motion uh, uh, the aircraft uh, response with respect to those disturbances we are talking about aircraft stability. Stability is uh, is a property of any any equilibrium state of of a system in this case case our system is okay let me repeat what we are interested in looking at we are interested in looking at uh, how no, an aircraft which is flying in equilibrium no, responds to any external disturbance which can be coming from wind for example. So, how an airplane, airplane flying in an equilibrium state responds to <coughs> disturbances for example gust of wind is related to this stability characteristics and that stability characteristic is a property of that particular equilibrium condition that the aircraft is flying in. So, let us try to define what equilibrium is. So, as we know an equilibrium state can be a position of rest. or a dynamic condition with uniform velocities. So, that also means with no
acceleration involved. Mathematically, this uh, translates into these two equations. So, sum of all external forces acting on the body are you know, balanced so that net acceleration is 0 and that gives that results in V equal to constant. So, if an aircraft is flying at constant uh, velocity uniform velocity then we say that the aircraft is in equilibrium added to that we should also have this condition satisfied which is added to that uh, condition we should also have this satisfied because the aircraft is a 6 degree of freedom uh, is having 6 degree of freedom motion 3 in translation described by uh, these 3 force equations and uh, this f is a vector uh, cons uh, consisting of the motion in the 3 uh, along the 3 axis of the aircraft and uh, the, the moments which are uh, giving resulting in three angular motions of aircraft. This also means if omega is the uh, the angular velocity vector multiplied uh, multiply that by this inertia that equal to 0 this uh, ratio is giving the angular acceleration. So, if the sum of external moments are 0 then what we arrive at is this. So, a dynamic uh, equilibrium condition will be represented by you know, uh, in a form velocity that can be translational or angular. Let us look at uh, uh, some of the flying equilibrium states of aircraft. So, example of no, such equilibrium states could be for example this cruise level flight so aircraft is moving with velocity v along its x axis and thrust is also acting along the x axis of the aircraft so the equilibrium state and the corresponding equation are you no know, just balance these forces in the x and z direction and what we get is so if i say u is the forward velocity. So, this velocity vector is or we can just write this as u all right. So, if you write down the balance of forces in the x and z direction what you get is and this change in u with respect to time we have to set to 0 to find the equilibrium condition. In the z direction similarly you have so w is the 
uh, velocity of aircraft in the z direction and that gives you and this also has to be set to 0 to get the equilibrium condition. So, in equilibrium conditions with uh, degrees of freedom both in translation and rotation uh, for this case. So, here we are talking about an, uh, a longitudinal flying condition which is cruise level flying condition. The equilibrium state can be defined by these two you know, balance of force forces and uh, the moment about the CG also should be 0. So, this these three equations so this m here is the pitching moment moment about the CG in this longitudinal plane of aircraft is the pitching moment and uh, these are the forces acting on the aircraft. So, this these three equations define the equilibrium state. Let us look at another example. So, this example example is also from longitudinal flying condition and here the aircraft is climbing. gamma is the flight path angle this w is the weight of the aircraft l is the lift drag is acting against the forward motion So, this is the z axis ok. So, let us try to write down the component of forces acting along x and z direction. So, we will again assume that thrust is acting in the, x, the uh, along the x axis of the aircraft and uh, v is this velocity vector which is again having only the velocity component in the the x direction. So, you can write the equation of motion along the x axis thrust which is taking it uh, in the forward direction and their forces opposing this motion and they are a component of weight along drag which is opposite to this x axis. All right. So, this has to be set to 0 to find the equilibrium state and the motion in the z direction is given by this has to be 0 at equilibrium state and the uh, the moments also have to be balanced. So, this condition is still active. So, this these three equations will define the equilibrium state of aircraft in steady climb this defines these these three equations define the equilibrium state in the level cruise condition. And uh, if you want to 
look at any want to look at a non non longitudinal equilibrium state it can be for example a steady level turn state so what uh, is happening in this case is bank angle as a constant for level condition flight path angle has to be zero on top of that if you want to say say coordinated level turn state then we can also add this condition which is side slip angle equal to zero so this will also constitute one equilibrium state which is a non longitudinal equilibrium state okay so what we uh, want to understand now through this is so we want to look at uh, when the aircraft is flying in these one of these equilibrium states and uh, a small disturbance hits the aircraft how it's going to you know, respond to that disturbance and that is the subject of stability stability has uh, two notions one is static another is dynamic so we'll uh, first uh, uh, look at what static stability is static stability of an equilibrium point and what is dynamic stability we are trying to we will we'll try to understand the difference between the two and uh, see where they are useful in flight dynamics so these concepts are applicable to you know, any system any physical system not just to the airplane so let's look at uh, uh, what i said in the beginning was that uh, stability is a property of an equilibrium state right so we have to look at uh, first an equilibrium state and see how a system when disturbed from equilibrium state uh, responds to the disturbance so the stability refers to uh, the systems property to come back to its original equilibrium state when it is disturbed from there so look at uh, simple examples let's look at example 1 so we have let's say in this case ball sitting on top of this hill there is another situation when this surface is now flat and the ball is sitting at this position so this position is a static position of rest or no, equilibrium position of rest we can also have this kind of curved surface which is like a well and a ball is sitting at the bottom of this
Now let us look at what happens. No? So these three positions are equilibrium positions. So ball is as in position of rest in one. 2 and 3 so this is 1 2 and 3 okay we will also assume that uh, this surface is smooth do not offer any resistance of the motion of the ball there is a very uh, not a realistic assumption but uh, uh, this simplifies a uh, lot of things. So we want to look at how this ball is going to behave when the ball is hit from or dust out from this uh, equilibrium of uh, equilibrium position. So the ball is hit. So we know that the ball, when the ball is hit from this side, ball is going to have a motion, which which is going to make it fall. So what is happening in this case is, when we disturb this ball from its equilibrium position of rest, it starts going away from this position when this happens we say that this equilibrium position of this ball is unstable when you hit it from the other side it is going to fall to the other side so this position of equilibrium is unstable for this ball. Now let us look at what is happening here. Here when you hit the ball it is going to go away from this equilibrium position and going to acquire another position. In such a case, we say that uh, that the ball is neutrally stable, or the equilibrium state of this ball is neutrally stable. In this case, when you hit the ball from this position, it uses that energy of no, the disturbance to rise along this wall of the well and goes up to some point and once it has lost that energy it starts coming back similar thing will happen on the other side so what it uh, is happening in this case is the ball is trying to come back to this equilibrium position. So this equilibrium position is a stable equilibrium. So right now what we are saying is we, uh, we want to look at uh, how the system is responding to a disturbance we are not saying no, whether it has really achieved its original state of equilibrium or not. So static stability refers to systems ball or the aircraft. tendency to
return to this original state. Static stability refers to system's tendency to return to its original equilibrium state. So clearly in this case it does not have any tendency to come back to this equilibrium state. So we say that is unstable in this case also it is going to go and acquire another equilibrium state. So that is why it is neutrally stable here it has a tendency to come back to this original equilibrium state. So we say that this is a stable equilibrium state for this ball. Let us look at uh, another example. So here we have a pendulum. So bob of mass m hanging at one end of this wire of length L and this O is the suspension point. So this clearly is an equilibrium state which is also the position of rest for this pendulum. Now let us see what happens when we hit this bob from this equilibrium state. So it is going to go away from this equilibrium state and acquire oh, oh, depending on the energy of the hit it is going to take a new position see what is happening at this position to the forces we will also associate one variable theta with this displacement from this equilibrium state which is we will see how we get this from the equation. So normal to this line is the path of this m representing its motion and we want to write down the equation of motion for this motion of mass m. So F is here minus of MGC sin theta. And let us try to write down the uh, moment equation for this case. So we are trying to write down the equation uh, of moment around the suspension point. So let's so this pendulum is having an angular motion about the suspension point and I is the inertia of mass M rotational inertia of mass M the equation of motion is okay so positive theta is this and so positive moment is this and negative moment is this 
So here uh, this is the this is the uh, acceleration no? positive acceleration and uh, angular acceleration and uh, into i is giving the moment in this positive direction which is balanced by this force mg sin theta into l in the negative direction that is why this negative sign i is ml squared. So, from this equation what we get is So, this is uh, the equation of motion of pendulum shown in the picture. To define the equilibrium state for this uh, pendulum, what we have to do is we have to either set the sigma m to 0 or we can also set all the variables uh, the derivatives of variables with respect to time to 0. So, in this case this uh, rate of change of uh, any variable with respect to time is 0 that is another definition of an equilibrium state. So, in this case what we get as the equilibrium state is no, is the result of this equation. So, sin theta equal to 0 as solution which is n into pi and can be and so on. So, n is an integer. So, physically uh, to uh, physically uh, uh, it looks like that there are two equilibrium solutions possible and they are Actually, n can be so the pendulum can go in the other direction also. So, we will can have solutions for this case as. these are physical solutions and this is the mathematical solution. So, here we have uh, three equilibrium states two of them are actually same. So, one equilibrium state is theta equal to 0 and the other equilibrium state is vertically up position of this mass m. Now, let us look at what is happening to this force when theta is changing. What we want to know is 
how this force is changing with respect to the angular displacement of the pendulum now from this equation what we get is and as I said uh, the equilibrium uh, the st uh, stability is a property of an equilibrium so we have to look at how this force is changing around the equilibrium states. remember this force is developing only because of the motion of this mass m if this theta is 0 there is no force so this force is uh, is developing because of the displacement of the mass m and uh, it's called restoring force So if you look at uh, the derivative of this force which is being developed because of the motion of the mass m so derivative of this force with respect to the, the displacement variable is minus of mg which is less than 0. So what it tells us is when theta is going up or increasing this f is going down that is what uh, this derivative is telling. So this force is actually acting in the direction to decrease the angle theta and that is when we say that uh, that this equilibrium state around which I have done this is a stable equilibrium state. Now let us look at uh, what happens so the, this is 1 and these are 2. Now let us look at what is happening at uh, equilibrium state so that is the vertically upward position of mass m. del f over del theta is plus mg in this case. Now here what is happening is when the ball is disturbed from this equilibrium condition this force you know, along the motion of the ball you know, along the increasing direction of theta is going to grow so it is actually taking the ball away from the equilibrium condition and that is when we say that the equilibrium state 2 is statically unstable.
so what is happening in this case is and with theta this force in the direction of you know, increasing theta is growing so it is going to further increase theta and theta is the the, the disturbance you know, so it's a change in uh, it's, a, it's, it's a change from this equilibrium state so <laughs> what is happening in this case is theta is growing this force is also going up and helping theta to grow further and that is when we say that is going to go away from the equilibrium state 2 which is theta equal to pi or minus pi and therefore the equilibrium state 2 is statically unstable. Now this example 3 is from aircraft dynamics so here we are looking at this aircraft which is flying level having only velocity component in this extraction So in equilibrium thrust is equal to drag and lift is equal to the weight of the aircraft and let us say some of all external pitching moments is also equal to 0. So this uh, in this uh, situation what we want to study is to look at if the aircraft is statically stable with respect to disturbances or not and this we are only doing graphically. So here we plot thrust and drag versus speed of aircraft. drag profile is you know, parabolic and uh, this drag has to be you know, overcome according to this equation. So the thrust available should be able to overcome the drag let us say we draw this for a jet engine. So thrust is almost constant with respect to the velocity. So this is my thrust available and this is drag. So where these two curves meet we are satisfying thrust equal to drag condition and that is our that intersecting point is our equilibrium state. So this is equilibrium state one and the other equilibrium state is here which is which will mark as two okay now let us try to you know, look at the stability properties of these two equilibrium states so one and two are equilibrium states we can look at stability with respect to you know, all state all variables involved here in this longitudinal plane but here we will restrict ourselves to 
change in speed in the forward direction. So let us look at what is happening to this equilibrium state. So let us say there is a change in speed in the no, so, so there is a disturbance which is causing a change in speed from this equilibrium state so that now aircraft no, speed has increased to this point from this equilibrium state. Now when this happens what is happening here is no, drag is going to go up it is going to change because of this increase in speed it is going to go up according to this curve and it becomes more than the thrust which is available. Okay. So automatically there is a deceleration of aircraft which is trying to bring it back. On the similar regions no, when the perturbation results in change in velocity uh, in the negative direction so the velocity is reducing the speed of aircraft in the forward direction is reducing then the drag goes down no, and the aircraft will accelerate because thrust available is more than the drag now. So let us put a arrow like this. So in both situations we see that uh, the tendency of the aircraft is to come back to this equilibrium state. So change in uh, speed is resulting in aircraft trying to reduce that uh, change in speed and then we say that this equilibrium condition 1 with respect to the change in speed is stable that is statically stable. We can give the same arguments on uh, this side also for equilibrium state 2. So this is your V equilibrium 2, V equilibrium 1. So if there is a decrease in velocity in this case now drag is again no, is more than the thrust available so aircraft will decelerate so it is going to take it away from this equilibrium condition and the, the other side giving the similar <laughs> argument the aircraft is going to go away from this equilibrium condition. So this equilibrium condition is statically unstable with respect to this change in speed due to the disturbance. Now let us look at what happens uh, when you change the thrust available. Thrust available uh, will also change with altitude and uh, when you go to higher altitudes it is going to thrust available is going to go down and there will be one. This line is going to be almost parallel to the first one. Okay. So let's uh, try to change the thrust available. We see that uh, there is one thrust condition, which is resulting in a single equilibrium state and that is associated with the velocity which is resulting in the minimum drag.
Now this case is of a neutrally, uh, neutrally stable equilibrium state because here what is happening is when the speed is increasing on this side because of the perturbation and drag is more than the thrust available and this is what is happening. On the other side also it is the same thing. So this is a neutrally stable equilibrium state and any equilibrium, any equilibrium state for the thrust available higher than the minimum drag no, any equilibrium state on the back side of this curve is unstable and on the other side is stable. But uh, in reality this is what, what it tells us is that whole of this part of this curve where we can find several trim points by changing the thrust available are not available for flying no? they are all unstable and on this side it is all stable. In reality uh, this is not what happens and we will talk about it when we come to dynamic stability.